Afzal says, if a person has wronged other people and realized after years, but now it is difficult to find them and apologize, what should he do in this situation? First of all, the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, that there are three books, if you, say, if you may say, and these books on the Day of Judgment, one of them, Allah does not ever forgive, which deals with blasphemy, with shirk, with uh, uh, atheism, anything that does, anything that deals with disbelief. This is unforgiven, immediately taken to hell. The second book, or record book, Allah does not pay attention to. And this is related to sins other than shirk. So what's between you and Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal does not pay attention to that. He would forgive because Allah is most forgiving. And these are sins between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. The third record book is the one that Allah does not leave until he make things even. And this is what's between the servants them, themselves. And this is what this question of Afzal is related to. The Prophet alayhi salatu said in an authentic hadith, Whoever transgresses against his Muslim brother, he must get even and seek his forgiveness or compensation before the day of judgment. Because on the day of judgment, there are no dirham or dinar. It is only good deeds and bad deeds. Now, this hadith clearly explains to us what will happen on the Day of Judgment. A third hadith, the Prophet says, alayhi salatu salam, to his companions, do you know who is a person who's broke, al-muflis, the one who's bankrupt? Who's he? So the companions defined it according to their worldly knowledge, so they said, a bankrupt person is a person who does not have dirham or dinar. He doesn't have any money. So the Prophet ﷺ clarified this to them. And he said that a bankrupt person is a person that comes on the day of judgment with good deeds of prayer, fasting, and charity. Whoa, so this guy is a righteous person. Well, this is what some people think of him. Then the Prophet says, والسلام, but he hit or beat this person. He cursed this person. He slandered this person. He backbit this person. So on the day of judgment, he'll start giving away his good deeds to them according to his transgression. And if his good deeds run out, then he will start to take from their sins and pile it on himself, and then he will be thrown into hell. A'udhu Billah. So this shows you that whatever you do, even if it is an ant's weight, whatever you do against your brother, it will reflect on you on the Day of Judgment by him taking from your good deeds. One of the sisters called me and said that my in-laws abuse me, phys uh, mentally that is, whenever I visit them in holidays. And I travel to them and they start to say bad things about me in front of me. Good intention, bad intention, Allah knows. But it hurts so bad that I don't want to see them. And I tell her, why are you so angry? 
Go, let them say whatever you want. This is all expiation to your sins. Allah is elevating your level. Allah is erasing your sins. So whatever they do, you should be grateful to them. Just do not let it get under your skin. Do not let it settle in your heart. So it's very important to know that on the day of judgment, it's good deeds and bad deeds. Now, if you wronged people, then you have a problem. You have to go to these people and ask them for forgiveness. This is the ultimate. So you back bit me. You cursed me. You said something that was slanderous about me. And then you felt remorse and you're sad. And you say, Khalas, let it go. On the day of judgment, we'll meet. And I'll take what's mine. Even if I did not know about it, Allah records every single thing. So what to do, Sheikh? You have a course, a, one of two. Either you come to me and you tell me, Sheikh, I've wronged you. I've said bad things about you. Please forgive me. And in this situation, there are two possibilities, or maybe three. One, I would say to you, I would never forgive you for saying what you had said. Two, I would say, may Allah forgive you. And may Allah forgive anyone who said bad things about me. And this is genuine, huh? I'm saying this now to you all. May Allah forgive anyone who said anything bad about me. Thirdly, I would investigate and say, what did you say? I want to know exactly what you had said so that I would forgive you. Now, this is problematic because if you tell me, this may cause more damage than good. So now you're coming to me. I know you, we meet, we socialize. I have nothing against you. When you came to seek my forgiveness and I inquired about the things you had said about me, if you tell me, this may add fuel to the fire. I didn't think you would dare and say such a thing. And I would become more furious and maybe not speak to you to the rest of my life. And this is more harm than good. So this is the first scenario. The second scenario is that you do not tell me, fearing that the consequences, the repercussions of telling me would cause more evil than good. And in this case, because of such a genuine fear, you have no other alternative but to whenever my name is mentioned in similar places where you had slandered me or cursed me or said bad things about me, you praise me. And you say, no, 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 the sheikh is, is a good one. The sheikh it, it has this and that. You say the good things about that individual that you had wronged. And you make dua for him. Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, uh, uh, pardon him and erase his sins, etc. Hoping that by your repentance, remorse, and seeking Allah's forgiveness, that on the day of judgment you will come and Allah, when it's time for being accountable, and when I come and say, oh Allah, this guy said so many bad things about me, give me from his good deeds, Allah would say, he had repented, I accepted his repentance, and I will compensate you from deeds and good deeds from me. So Allah would not consume his good deeds to erase my sins, rather he would please me and I will go pleased with the grace of Allah Azza So I hope this answers the question, but be careful from wronging others. This will haunt you for the rest of your life. 
So many people tend to misinterpret and come up with excuses so that they go to bed and sleep without any worries, not knowing that even if they don't remember or they try not to remember, it is all recorded uh, with Allah Azza wa Jal.